What's going on, buddy? Hey, bud. How are you? I'm good, man. You know, all things considered, been pretty busy, though. Know? Good to see you. As good as I can right now. Yeah, yeah, right? How, how, how's things going with you? Everything's good? Yeah, every, everything's good. Everybody's healthy. Good. Um, staying busy. Yeah, you busy at the shop? Very busy, yeah. We've actually been doing uh, 12 hour days, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. because we're just, we're really busy. Wow. I, I was closed for three weeks back when COVID first hit and I was out for five weeks. So that, that really put us, uh, you know, behind. Yeah. yeah, I think we shut down for like, maybe like two months, like shut down. And then maybe even longer, actually, especially with the showroom. And then, um, man, we just, oh, we've really been out time now. And then we've had the showroom open like six days a week more recently. You know, you don't, you know, you don't know what to think, you know, how dangerous it is. And, you know, people who've had it. And I, I know people, I have, I have had customers that died from it, you know. So you got to take it seriously. Yeah. Now, what about you? You had a bit of a scare with it, huh? I did. I had it for five weeks. I tested positive, and the first two weeks were really bad, um, and then the third week was kind of bad, and after that, you know, it was just like a flu after that, but the first two weeks were really scary. Really? I stayed, uh, you know, healthy enough. I didn't, wasn't admitted to the hospital, which was good. You know, um, my wife took good care of me. Nobody else got it. That's so. amazing, right? I mean, you were around everybody, right? Uh, I kind of isolated. We have an upstairs and a downstairs, and a downstairs is fully furnished, so I kind of just stayed down here. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what's the weirdest thing is I still have, I mean, we're talking, this was the end of March, beginning of April, and my smell still is not back 100%. Might never come back, and cer certain parts of my taste is not back. Really? Yeah, weird. Now, did you lose that all together when you were sick? I did, well... Like for the first two weeks, I didn't eat for two weeks. No wow. desire to eat. I was really weird because it's not like, you know, if you get the flu, you want to sleep and feel better. Couldn't sleep. I mean, I was, I had like sleep deprivation. I was, I was like hallucinating. It was, it was pretty weird. Didn't want to eat. And when I started eating, like any seafood, I could taste perfectly. But meats, steak, couldn't taste it at all. Really? So, and even still, I don't even hardly eat like red meat anymore because it just doesn't add the, the taste doesn't do this name for you right yeah it's kind of weird wow that's crazy and that must have been tough on the family huh scary yeah it was yeah we got a i got a big photo album from that whole time you know of what i look like really you know, I lost, i don't even know how 21 much yeah, 20 pounds. 21 pounds in like two, two three weeks i lost seven yeah Hey Vince, say hi to Paulie. Hey Vince. But anyway, yeah, it, it was kind of scary. But you know, thank goodness I uh, I pulled out of it. I mean, you know, Christian, he's got buddies down in Jersey. One of his buddies down in Jersey died from it. You know? Really? Yeah, he's Christian's age. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah, I had a customer that died. I mean, he was older. But yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It's it's been so crazy, and you know, we've been we've been trying to be as as strict as we can with this whole thing, and. You know, we did a quarant we quarantined real strict for a long time. And even now we try not to go into stores. I mean, New York's gotten a lot better, but you know, there's it's such a there's such a high risk there, you know what I mean? For even our loved ones, you know. I mean, we don't really see anybody that much, you know. That's been the hardest part, I think, is is kind of staying away from different family members, you know. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. So, uh, okay. so, what, so what are you up to, man? What do you got going you know, on? Well, I'll tell you, man. Uh, first of all, thanks for coming along and, and, and being a guest judge on this thing. Uh, it was like maybe the second month into quarantine, and I was like, I got I to gotta figure something out. I've been wanting to do something to change things up a little bit, you know, like a virtual car show, or like an online car and motorcycle show. And, and it's a big pay it forward. Like, think about it, Vin. These people watched us all those years like do creative fun things. And now this is like a perfect platform to pay it back. You know, look, think about when we were younger, we were always just tinkering and messing around with those planes in the background. Remember I built that exhaust for that plane. It didn't, it didn't really work, 
but like before we were professionals, we, we started somewhere, right? It was like you experimented, right? How many bikes did you have that you messed with? Or, you know, you're always taking all the things, right? And so there's so many people out there, but they don't have a platform to showcase maybe some type of idea that they did or just the fact that they're proud of it and it gives them a boost and it, and it kind of causes them to move forward a little further, right? You didn't just stop tinkering with bikes. We went on to doing like, you know, all those crazy customs, all those years of American Chopper because think about it. We were given an opportunity, really, because without television and all that hype, we may not have ever built all those bikes. Most likely it wouldn't even happen that way. Like that was our opportunity. Yeah. So my thought is like, maybe out of the box, it might not seem that way, but I think it could be grown into something that could give people an opportunity to put a leg up. You know, like maybe be able to make it a career, may, do multiple builds, do what they're passionate about because they get enough attention where they can start doing that some, on some level. That's fantastic, man. It is the opportunity because, I mean, you know, how many people in the middle of nowhere don't have any opportunity to get their bike shown? And, you know, they supported us for all those years, and we're kind of experts, right? I mean, we've done it long enough where we've kind of earned the right to be able to say what's good and what's not. We brought in judges that are even more specific to this particular area of motorcycles, you know. Um, so, I don't know. I just, I thought, and I thought it'd be fun for us, you know. Here's what's yeah. cool about it. We can even get into some of the stuff we like. I know when I called you, I mentioned maybe doing some of those 80s cars. And, you know, like, that'd be killer, you know? Um, I mean, you had, that, you had that Camaro, right, back in the day. What was that, 80? 80, 83. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I mean, that would be a fun class to bring you back in for. And I think in our age group – you know, where we're, we like romanticize those days in the 80s, you know? Right, right. yeah. And, they were uh, the coolest days of our lives back then. They were, man. They were our best days. And there's a lot of guys out there like me and you that want to see that stuff again, you know? Um, and that's just one of many categories, you know? Oh, that's exciting, man. I, I like it. I like hearing about it. Yeah. So. I'm excited for it, man. Because I know just me, I was a tinker my whole life, riding since I was little, working on stuff. Nobody ever saw any of that. I didn't even have cameras to take pictures of it. Right? Uh, yeah, I know. It's like forgotten no. about, you know? I know. You're right, man. There was, there was no smartphones. There was no technology. You had to go in the house and make a phone call. Yeah. Right? Once in a while, I got the old camcorder out. I still got some old uh, videos. Yeah, you know, doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like Very rare. Very yeah. little. Yeah, you know who's got really funny uh, VHS videos? Mikey. Have you ever seen his... Uh, from when he was a kid. No. Oh my gosh, dude. I'm telling you, you gotta see him. We got him on DVD. So funny, man. Doing like Nancy Kerrigan skits back in the day, you know, just crazy. Uh, just just cooking shows at my sister. I mean, just out of his mind. But uh, I've been talking to Michael a lot. Yeah, yeah. I see how yeah, you guys seeing each other more. Or? Yeah, yeah. I saw him, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago. He came over a couple times. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got, I got a, I, I built a full kitchen in my shop, so I cook a lot there, man. I cook breakfast, lunch, everything there. Was so he cooking he, with you? Yeah, he was coming back there. Yeah, he he wanted he was he was talking about he wanted to do a cooking show. <laughs> no. like, you know, hey, let's do it, man. It's kind of cool though, man. You got a, you got like a whole cooking setup in your shop. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty cool, man. We put a shower, a bathroom, everything in there, so I could do all that stuff. You know, get all dirty and walk into the kitchen and just. You know, put on your apron and start freaking cooking, you know? Nice. That might be a cooking show. I, I, I think that's pretty unique, huh? Yeah, yeah. So we, we were just talking about because I'm, I'm big into cooking, man. The older I get, the more I love cooking, you know? So yeah, uh, yeah it's cool, man. I enjoy that stuff. You know, it's funny. We I started cooking a lot more than I used to because of this COVID thing, man. We're just, we cook every day now. We have to eat out a lot. We cook, we cook at home every day now. Like, Every single day, you know. Yeah, yeah. I even get Vincent over here to cook with me sometimes. We make like the Asian dumplings. Oh yeah, homemade from scratch, man. Yeah, they take Ooh. a while. Me and him do it, man. It's awesome. We have a good time doing it. Nice, good. We like doing that stuff. But yeah, yeah man, this is this is a great idea, man. That's that's exciting. Yeah, and I'm glad you're a part of it, man. Me too. Thank you. I appreciate you even uh, approaching me on it. That's great because I mean we're. You know, we got a lot of things going on. I got my own life and my kids and 
you know, you got your kid and your wife and Crazy. you got so much stuff going on. We just, we don't really get a chance to connect ever, you know? No, no. It's, it's, it's kind of cool, man. It's, it's really cool that we can do this together. That's yeah, awesome. we get into <laughs> it. I think the next run, we're calling this round one. I think round two is going to be motorcycle and a car, whatever that might be. We're talking maybe the new Indians, maybe see who's customizing the new Indians and make that one thing. And then something car related, we talk about maybe doing Jeeps or, you know, something about like a scooter that. class, man. Maybe a scooter class. Yeah, man. Well, we can, you know, there's some guys funny. really, really pimping them things out, man. Oh, I know. I know. I'm, I know. I'm back into scooting again, man. Oh, I, dude, I just, great. It's so it funny. I was just talking to a guy the other day and I was telling him how, like, all the bike shows we went to all those years, you know, we'd be signed photographs and we'd want to, like, scoot back to the hotel. And we just get on the scooters, all like seven of us, and be like, we and go like blasting by sidewalks, backyards, right? Any, any, like, any way to get back to the hotel, two hours, eat lunch, and then zoom all the way back and sign autographs, right? I mean, you, and that was the funnest part about the whole event, right? It was the greatest part ever. I was just saying, like, somebody was just looking at my Vespa today, and I'm like, you know something, you want to hear something funny? Vespa was out in Sturgis. That thing went to Mount Rushmore. Remember that? Dude. We had all the scoots out and stuff. Oh, dude, that was the funnest. Dude, that, that was so fun. That was so much fun, man. But I've been scooting a lot, man. I got a little – I got Mikey's old Yamaha Vino 125. Oh, and yeah? I, I keep that right up in uh, Rhode Island. So when I go up there on weekends, man, we've been taking it in a new port. We've been driving everywhere. It's so much fun. And they're reliable and just yep. – they're, they're fun. You own them. When you're on them, you own them. Like, you can make them do whatever you want, right? They're just yeah. not hard to ride. They're just nothing but fun. You don't got you barely even think about it, you know? I know. You know what they do? For me, I smile when I ride them. The whole time. The whole time. Oh, my God. I smile. So, I love it, oh, we used to even rally around here, remember? Yeah. Yeah. You still go like Donnie's house? I do. My That thing's brand new. Brand spanking new. What is I think it? you got your Vespa 3, what is it, 300? 300, yeah. And then Rachel's got a 250. A 150. Is, it, is it a 150? 150. And then what about your old Yamaha Zuma? Do you still have that gray one? No. No, you got yeah, that. That's what I have. I have the, the big gray one. Is that what you're talking? No, no. Oh, no, the Yamaha Zuma. No, are no. The ones we got. No, those are the <laughs> They were. <laughs> I had my red Zuma. Funny. You had your Yamaha. What was that? Like a 150? Was that a 150? It was, it was only a 50, but we worked oh, them. We put big car kits on them, and then Michael had the Vino. That's right. We pumped them all up. Yeah. Oh, dude, those things were. We would just lock them up as long and as hard as you could, right? Just skidding yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah I almost was, forgot about that thing. Yeah, that thing was great. I don't have that. No, I just have my uh, my my uh, Vespa, and Rachel's got the Vespa. We've had them for a long time, but they're like new, man. They're you know. Yeah, you know what's funny is people ask me like, oh, you got bikes, you got all this stuff, you got cars, and I'm like, no. As far as cars go, I don't really have anything that doesn't hold six people. Yeah, because you know? my family's big, but I like I was collecting scooters, man. I had six scooters at one time. <laughs> You know, it was funny. Even old ones, man. I had this old Honda Express. It was an Urban Express 50 from like 82. And I was like, I got too much scooters. I'm going to sell it. You know who bought it? Ted's V Twin for the museum. No way. Yeah, it's in the museum over there. Was it nice? Was it in good shape? <laughs> it was mint condition. It was a 1982. No way. Yeah. He up, he's like, I'll take it. Yeah, he bought it, man. I, I put it on Facebook Marketplace for sale. And he contacted me, and he wanted it for his museum because that, that dude's got, like, every year of everything. You know? Yeah, he does. He really does, man. Amazing. Yeah, Motorcyclepedia down there, they do a good job. They do. I know. Oh, but it was closed for COVID when I went there. It was yeah. all shut down, so I just delivered it, you know. And But I, I kind of looked in there, man. He's got a lot of bikes in there. I'm telling you, man, You when you get when they open up, you get a chance to go in there because it'll That's blow what everybody you. says. It'll yeah. blow you. They got every year of Indian from 01 to 53. Yeah, that's crazy. Every yeah. single year goes all the way around the room, dude. Unbelievable. And, and every kind of make and model motorcycle, even not only American, but all kinds of European, it'll blow your mind. Even the, even the innovations and the, um, you know, some of the design that you see and some of the bikes, you know, like people were really cutting edge back then. I mean, it's just, it'll blow your mind. Technology that you think wasn't, didn't exist then, you know. All mechanical, but cool, you know. Yeah, well, remember when we went to Jay Leno's? You remember that? Yeah, I'm very impressed. He was, because remember, he had that one 
Remember, he had a couple airplane hangers, but the one was strictly motorcycles. He yeah. had all them old Vincents and all them old bikes. You never even see him. Nope. I know. I was like, wow. Yeah, I got into the old bikes uh, about five years ago. I got a couple of old. I, I collect original paint stuff. So I got three early, early original paints. I got the 09 Indy and the 13 Excelsior and a 15 Thor right now. And then you, you haven't been to my shop, have you? You haven't been there. No, I said that to Melissa You're the other day. Have I was and I'm like, you know what? I'm you like, should. I know. It's cool. I, I got to make sure you're there and just come come by. Yeah, just call me, you know. I think uh, you'll like it, dude. It's all like killer old signs and historical pieces. I've been doing that for like like five years, but heavy into it, like collecting really good stuff, you know. You're preserving the art too, you know, oh, when you yeah. get it. It's all, it's, all, it's all American history, Vin. It's all our American history. It really is, whether it's gas and oil advertising or actual motorcycles. I have a Zeppelin from 1928. It's a real, it's a, it's a pre-production scale model. It's a scale prototype of the Akron built by Goodyear. you got to see it. It's 10 feet long, and it, it's just a scale model made out of Duraloom, which is like this really strong light aluminum that they built these Zeppelins out of. Just, it's... It's such a piece of history. It's like an actual piece of history, not just a cool sign or advertising. It's historically important, you know. And we've been really fortunate enough to really get our hands and even touch history. With yeah. like this, you know, I was thinking about that the other day because I still got some little pieces from the Statue of Liberty. Remember when we were doing that stuff? Yeah. Little pieces of that cable that we had. Remember those slivers? Yeah, that is so weird you say that because – now with the way I collect, that stuff is like holy grail stuff. And I yeah. always think, why didn't I keep? I don't know. You know, I don't, back then we had that stuff, even from nine eleven. From the from the, right. you can't get that stuff anymore from the buildings. Right. We had that Nelson stud that we put on top of the bike. You know, on top yeah. of the fire bike. We and had that one uh, beam that was there too. Remember that beam that dude, those guys brought in? Well, think about the bikes we built, dude. We got bikes that were like in at national monuments, like that Liberty bike. I mean, that's just like, you know, it's crazy. Crazy that bike too, because we had our hands on stuff on that that like no one could really get a hold of, you know what I mean? Ever. I brought that suitcase down and he had all them original cables going up through the Liberty for the Statue of Liberty and the lead encased wires and all that crazy. stuff. Crazy. You know, and even think then we did the 911, the, the New World Trade Center bike. And we had to restore it. And then we had to restore it. That was a real, like, kind of crazy piece to do. That whole bike was crazy to do, wasn't it? But it came out wild, didn't it? It came out, like, right what it needed to be. That's funny, because they were just doing a whole thing on a memorial of that place, and it showed the, the, the Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tank? yeah. They sent me the file to that, but it was such a weird file. Yeah, to reconfigure it. To make sense out of that thing. Yeah. But when we did, it just came out so good, man. Good, man. We did good stuff together, man. We really did. Think about it. You know, I think about it like we really made history together in a major way. You know, think about it like 20 years of television. I'm um, 10 years of television, right? 10 years of American Chopper. And all like what we did, like what, 25, 30 episodes a year for 10 years. That's a... That's a that's an unbelievable, and, and, and really when we started, we created a genre of television. We didn't even know what we were doing, but it happened. And, you know, reality shows, there were no reality shows but ours, really. I mean, like it, the way ours was done, you know. And so, you we think had about no it. idea what we were doing. No idea. We just were. Yeah. yeah I, was, I was a mechanic, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Start building bikes. We're going to film you. Okay. I'll tell you, people want to. You're an iron worker. Yeah. Bikes on the side. That's it. Now. It just developed into a thing, man. You know, amazing. And Discovery really, really afforded us a global audience. Think about it. For all those years, man. Right. The, the chances of that. You know what I mean? Unbelievable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like where we live? Come on. I know. It's not real. It still doesn't seem real at times, you know? Like, and especially in the beginning, remember how crazy it was. I mean, it was like, it was almost scary. It was almost scary. That's how big it got. It was because like, it was like right beginning of 2003 when it really blew up. It was like, it was because we were just regular dudes. You know, you're just like, what the heck? All of a sudden you couldn't even go to the mall. Really, man. I remember that. And I was like, wow, this is, 
cool, but a little freaky, you know? We had like a large group of people in that shop, you know, always working. And uh, we had fun, man. We really did. Those early days, we laughed so hard. Even our road trips, dude, when we were like, when we were taking the motor home down with the fly spot, 40 foot trailer, we were like 110 feet long. But it was so crazy driving all night down to Louisiana to that, what was that, a something pony, steel pony? You remember that? Oh, my God. You remember we ran out of diesel fuel? Me and my father walked to the gas station to get diesel. <laughs> we had to prime the pump. We had diesel fuel all over us. Oh, geez, dude. What? It was so crazy. You almost always got a flat on the trailer, right? It was like you almost always got flats. That's funny. I remember that. The first time your dad came down with us, we went down like a father-son trip down there. That was steel pony, yeah. You and your dad and me and my dad. Oh, jeez. That was crazy, man. Silver Fox, I think he might have came too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen him not too long ago. He looks good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, listen, man. Uh, I appreciate it. We'll catch up some more, but um, I really appreciate you being a part of this, and I'm looking forward to you know, kind of working together in some capacity, you know, with this show and you know, where it goes. You know? But, um, yeah, and it's nice, too, because we could do it like this. I could still, you know, do my stuff. I got my family still here, you know. It's like you don't got to, like, go away and travel away for a week, you know. That's the beauty of this. Even for anyone who gets involved, there's no, other than what we're doing right now, there's really no other commitment, no no real time commitment that's anything significant. And traveling's not even an option, so that wouldn't work anyways at this right. stage. You know? it, works, it works out perfect. So, Okay. Well, good, Vince. All right, buddy. Well, you look great. I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're good. I'm glad you're okay, man. You know. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, we're, everybody, everybody's doing good. You still look good, man. Right, ten yeah, years later. Fine, you know. I keep the beard short because there's so many grays. I got to keep it short because if I grow it out, I look like I'm eighty. Oh my God, I got gray. I got gray stripe <laughs> up here. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, buddy. Well, listen, man. I'm gonna be getting you some of the. Um, some of these uh, entries pretty soon. I'm going to probably give them to you in waves of 10 so you could look at them and then we'll get back together and make some decisions. All right. Awesome. All right. Cool, man. Thanks, All right. buddy. Man. Thanks, man. I'll Thanks. talk to you. Thanks.